It is crucial that the storyteller enables people to see contemporary history within a context that gives meaning to its experiences. I am an African with an open heart and a rainbow colored skin and I fit in cause I live under African skies. I, 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 Um, yeah, space and animals getting back to comfort zones. Uh, everyone has their, their comfort zone. So, what uh, has amazed me through the years, being in not only Kruger, I've been all around. Um, South Africa and Botswana, Zimbabwe, or places where I've encountered many different animals, and seeing that uh, their their respect for man and our past, and then also their reaction to us respecting their space, per se, or their comfort zone, where they have that that limit, where um, they will allow you to. Uh, approach them and confront them to a certain extent and then that would be the space this is my space and this is your space and they'll respect you in your space and respect as long as you respect them in their space and so that again just shows you their you know the intelligence to certain extent where if they know there's a camp out there and they will keep their you know their certain distance from it and get as close as they can to a certain extent you get inquisitive animals that will get closer but um yeah, in that respect of space, that uh, everything I believe has the comfort zone. Has the I like being naked, so it's a it's a freedom that provides a freedom. So when you walk barefooted, you are allowing yourself to meet the ground. And Joburg isn't a very barefoot friendly city. Uh, it doesn't like bare feet. It's very grimy and dirty. You know. The soles of your feet get very, very dirty very quickly. But in my space, I mean, um, I don't mind being naked. Um, people, people in Joburg, they, they live very close to each other. I used to smoke weed and go to work. And I realized that I'd have to wait for an empty taxi. Because if I got into a taxi with other people, I felt their energies because of that intimate space where... They would, I would, I just, I wouldn't feel okay. I wouldn't feel okay. It would, and on some days it wasn't bad, but on some days it would, I would really, really feel it, you know. So, like this for me is a good space. Because physically, the ability to stretch your arms and to think allows you to touch places within yourself. But if, if you're worried about survival and hunger, you have no time to worry about the... The, the the higher the higher concepts in terms of basic Maslow's hierarchy. You don't have time to think about the universe and space and time. Between now and infinity, will time travel ever be possible? So it's not a universe, it's a multi-dimensional verse where the actions here that are changed have a different consequence. So because it's, it's impossible to believe that we, this is the only planet with life. It's, you, have to be abs you have to be mad. Well, space... I guess the, the, the... I mean, space is something that you experience. And here I experience space, firstly, because I walk everywhere, pretty much, everywhere locally. So that gives you a new feeling for, for distance. Um, also, fortunately here, you can see out to sea and the, the horizon's very wide and, and that, that expands your concept of, of space. Similarly, we're lucky that we live in an area which is without much light, so the stars are very bright and you can see the um, with, with uh, just a basic telescope you can see the rings around Saturn and the moons around Jupiter and things like that so it helps you develop that sense of space above you being three dimensional as opposed to a flat two dimensional black uh, 
blanket with white spots. Um, but ultimately, you know, space here is also about what you define as your space. And here I would define it as my village. Um, and so that, that's an area where f full of people and uh, forests and rivers and grass. <laughs> so I'd say if, for me, space is the place where I do stuff. And that's primarily where I am here. You know, people see my life here as being out of touch in a way because it's so remote and it's so rural. Whereas I'm far, I, f I feel far more in touch with me being here. And it sounds a bit like a cliche, but I've got a very practical way that, um, you know, that I guess I've, I've become a lot more in touch with, you know, everyday living. Yeah, I Hmm. Space is 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 whatever is surrounding me. If I choose to swim in the ocean, it is not really my space because I don't own the ocean. But I'm borrowing a space for that moment and uh, when I'm done with that space it's no longer my space but I think a, a man-made object can be your space that's what you define as your space if you if you own it uh, or according to our way of understanding things yeah. uh, if, if you are using it at that moment that is your space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th this has always been my, my favorite part of, of Cape Town. It's known as the City Bowl area. Uh, bowl because it's it's kind of in a bowl that is formed by the three mountains that, that surround the city. Um, the scenery everywhere is beautiful. Um, this area in particular is always quite busy, quite hip and happening. Lots of students, lots of young people, lots of diverse people from people from all over the world. It can, can get tiring because it's uphill a lot of the time, but also the nicest thing is just how picturesque it is. Um, very green and leafy, and um, and with the mountain close by for for going on walks, and very close by, you know. And walk for a few minutes and find yourself in the middle of a, a forest on the side of the and mountain. Yeah, I've I've always loved this area. When uh, when I was when we first started living here, I I was still in school, and the school I went to is just actually around the corner from here. So there's been a lot that's happened for me in, in this particular area. And you know, I I love to travel. I've done a bit of traveling in my life. Um, I've done traveling around South Africa and a little bit in other parts of the world, into USA and Europe. Um, but I certainly do consider this my home and, and the place that I I want to live. I obviously love just I love and me and just the, the energy around there and just the, the ocean and the openness. You're not confined to anything. So that creates a sense of sorry, a sense of peace within. They, the people around you were nomadic. They came through from North Africa and just travelled, um, and that's what happened in this Tran Transkei area. The, they were confined and restricted to a place. They couldn't move further south because the settlers came up from the south, and they were confined to the Transkei area. And before the cattle used to move around and graze and they if they finish an area they move to the next area and graze there but as soon as they were confined to the Transkei area they didn't move around they had to settle and build permanent residence rather than before that these movable residents so yeah I think there was a big adapting process and it's still a bit of a problem because for the closer people um, their cattle is everything they, they, their riches is their cattle their bank is the cattle they don't have money they're using money now I mean all, all cultures change but before the money was how many cattle you have and they get golfs and they get more golfs and you only use them sometimes when you have to one of your sons wants to get married and has to pay the the bola what they call it the money for the wife 
but um, it, I think it was a massive adapting process. The, the, the cattle stock wasn't as healthy as it was before because they couldn't move around. But the, at this stage, the funny thing is the Transcar doesn't live like, is not like the rest. We're part of South Africa now. We, could be, we became part of South Africa in 94 when Mandela took over. And there's still no, nobody owns any land in this area. Nobody's got paperwork for land here. It's all communal land. If you want a piece of land, you go to the headman and you can demarcate your piece of land. You have to pay him a bottle of brandy and some crate of beer. And then you get your piece of land and you have to call the whole community in and everybody will sit there and have another crate of beer and talk about it and that's your piece of land then. But you have no paperwork on it, so that's how you still... it's still communal. And then the people live at the little homesteads, always up on the mountains. Nobody lives down by the river because of beliefs of the water snake and stuff like that lives by the river. People live on the hills rather. But down by the river, they have the amasimini, which means the, 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 the garden, big garden. Around the house you always see small garden. In the valley you see big garden. And that is where they used to grow all the crops and things, which is also changing now a lot because government gives a lot of pension monies and things, so more, less and less people is planting and producing themselves. Space for me is opportunity. You know, um, the one side it represents I can expand. Uh, there's expansiveness, so there's uh, if I've got space around me, uh, it means I can go in any direction. And a lot of time, especially city living, space is constricted. And that's why I live out here where I, I live. I feel space. The minute I get over this mountain, I've left the city behind. And I feel like, hold on, I have space now. And that's very important for me. Uh, but another thing about space that I've realized recently is that space isn't empty. And a lot of the time we think of the space between us as the things that separate us. But in essence, what we know now with uh, quantum physics and you know, nanoscience and all of that, space is full. So it's not what separates us space actually is what connects us. When you see the, the way that space doesn't separate us, it actually joins us. And that you can tap into the energy of space as well. That it's full of knowledge, it's full of creativity, it's full of... Um, you know, there is this ancient knowledge that it, you can tap into. And that is in the space. You don't have to necessarily go and plug into someone and be right with them, to be connected with them. You have the power of prayer, if you look at that, the power of distant, uh, what's it, uh, telekinesis or tel telepathy, sorry, and, uh, and distant healing and all of these kind of things, that goes through space and I really believe that, that space is, is freedom and it's knowledge and it is, when you look up as well at the at what we term space out there it gives a sense of perspective as well as sometimes what we think is real and a problem is really insignificant